if we don't have any parks, there'll be nowhere to go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help the park by setting up a, a lemonade stand. Oh, thank you. What's your name, honey? Hailey. Hailey? Hailey. Hailey. Thank you, Hailey. We might take you up on that. Um, I'm Nita McCubrey. I'm a senior citizen and Thank I'm you. very much Everyone for the parks. Uh, but for the future, um, we need to know more about our demographics and we need to target our seniors and um, talk to them specifically. Because they're on fixed incomes, I'm not quite yet. I'm still working, but I'm close to retiring. Because our senior citizens need to be really aware of the value of the parks, but they're also fighting limited income. So we need to have those demographics and we need people to go out and talk to our seniors. Because I think they will do, do it if they know about it. And for those that really can't, the idea of an exemption would make them vote for it. Okay, okay. that's a good idea. Um, regarding the demographics, yeah, clap. Oh well. Regarding the demographics, um, we, our census numbers, we just did the census, and so all that information should be here by the end of December, and that'll give us really good um, information on the demographics. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, this is Kevin. So you guys know he did the masonry work on the bell tower. Uh, thank you, and Kevin. And I just wanted to introduce him to everyone. We appreciate it, Kevin. It was a donation money. Yeah, I donated to uh, I love this place. Um, seniors half off for you know, the taxes. We got to keep these parks open for our kids. Steel pylons so the kids can't drive on our parks here. Um, now we got to keep the sucker open. And let's do reclaimed water here. That's a lot cheaper, and it's a benefit for everything. I don't like the the astroturf gets too hot. Got to stay with nature, keep our climate down, and things like that. So it's not that bad. Let's keep this park open. I agree. It's all for the kids. Just one second. Regarding the still, um, the county was supposed to put in bollards when they designed the park. They were going to put those in. It never happened, and I don't believe they'll do it now. But if the park was designed to have those, it was a reclaimed water. Um, the water district has put in some of the purple pipe, but it doesn't come this far. But hopefully, in the next phase, it will be. But I wrote down your idea. Let's get it here. Yeah, I'll no, put I agree. In the steel pylons. Okay. Okay. I have no problem with that. Thank you. you hear that, Paula? <laughs> Susan Lane. And Susan Lane also used to be on the Water Parks Committee. Uh, Steve, well, how are you? I think everybody here loves parks. It goes without saying. Um, I agree with the gentleman that just spoke about the um, reclaimed water. I think that's a phenomenal idea, and I do agree that the heat, as you all know, gets pretty hot over here, and um, having uh, the turf gets very, very warm. Um, the reason why I'm up here is if my math does me right, we have probably about a year's worth of funding. So maybe I'm wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong. A little but, bit less. Yes. Yeah, so if we have less than a year, this parks will not survive without an assessment. And what we really need to think about is what we can do to ensure our parks keep open, also ensure that we're not going to be slapped with another lawsuit from you know certain individuals, and that uh, we can meet the needs of all the community, and that includes the community over on the other side of the freeway that currently does not have a park to go to. Um, I, when we first came up with this whole thing back in 2000, and that formation committee came in, started cranking, and we had a lot of movement, and it takes a lot of volunteers um, to educate the public on what the assessment is about, what it means to each taxpayer, and what it means to everybody in the community. So I'm asking, when are we going to start having these, you know, weekly meetings, however, whatever it takes, we have less than a year to pass an assessment in order to keep this open. Right, and, and in the concluding comments, I will be announcing all those things. Hi. Hello, my name is Heather Hayworth. Um, <laughs> I feel like I have to go like this. Um, first, I just want to say that I know it's kind of preaching to the choir because everybody here wants to keep this open. But first thing I want to say is when we were walking up and I was telling my daughter why we were coming here because she wanted to go play and everything, I was telling her why we were here for the meeting. She started crying because she was afraid she was never going to get to play on the slides again. And it was Catherine that was here um, earlier speaking to you. You heard her. 
and so you heard her appeal. Second, I wanted to say that, um, talking about the fundraising and stuff, we have the dog park. Have we thought about having any dog-related activities as a fundraiser, having a dog show or having an agilities competition or something like that as a fundraiser and getting those people out? Because I know people who do dog type of stuff, it's a nice, tight-knit little community and when they have something that's going on, they'll attend it. Okay. So there, there's an idea of some fundraisers. It's not a common type one. No, it's not. Thank you. John Garrett, our local dark skies expert. Hi, thank you. Um, I didn't hear anyone. Oh, by the way, the park over there with the dog park, I think, is getting just a little too much water in winter, so maybe that could shave off a, a little bit of expenses. Of course, I'm always advocating killing the lights. Uh, over there, and um, I didn't hear it mentioned if it has been mentioned, but um, I'd be most eager to make a $28 donation right away. So if you have an account set up for that, while we're talking, uh, yes, we do, John. Um, we have talked it over with our city staff, and since the $28 will not be on your taxes this year, you can voluntarily donate your $28. <laughs> Set up a fund that we yes we will set up a fund it'll be specifically for parks okay or we can send something out to all the people in Moldemar like once a year reminding them and I mean I'd be willing to give more than twenty eight dollars thank you I'll give those people's money every year thank you yes Henry. okay uh, another idea it just came to mind I'm just sitting over there looking at this uh, beautiful snack bar that we have right here. And McDonald's would look really nice right there, Burger King, uh, Carl's Jr., uh, Pollo Loco, you name it. Go and bid it, and then they pay for the cost of, the par of maintaining the park. That's a rent. Uh, same thing with the new park. And maybe the, the, the incentive is whoever gets this one gets the other one has the first dibs, and so that we don't have any lawsuits open it up to anybody that wants to get a business in, in there. Thank you. Chris Weber? Um, just looking at the backstops, I know it's a hard sell right now in this economy, but why don't we have advertising up there? Why don't we have sponsorships? Um, if you go step onto any one of the high schools in this, in this area, you will see all sorts of things lining the backstop. In fact, if you drive down the 15, you can see them from the freeway at Tabasco Canyon. So, uh, advertising, sponsorship type um, opportunities on the backstops and other places around the park. Okay, thank you. 